So if someone says, oh my God, it's raining cats and dogs, then it doesn't mean that cats and dogs are literally pouring down from the sky. It just means that it's raining very heavily. And that's because raining cats and dogs is an idiom. We humans love to use idioms because they add color, vibrance, and life to our speech and writing. Idioms could be tricky. They could turn a pleasant conversation into an awkward one if you don't know what a certain idiom means. So in this video, that's exactly why I'm going to talk about the most commonly used idioms in daily English conversation. And the first one is cup of tea. So when something is your cup of tea, it is what you enjoy or choose for yourself. It is basically your preference or favorite. For example, commuting to work is not my cup of tea, but working from home is. Reading has never been his cup of tea, so he usually just listens to audiobooks. A more modern variation of this would be thing. So instead of saying cup of tea, you can say something like, commuting to work is not my thing, but working from home is. Or... Reading has never been his thing, so he usually just listens to audiobooks. Ring a bell. So, it's, so if something rings a bell, it means that it reminds you of something or that it sounds familiar. For example, I'm looking for a missing woman, redhead, tall, with a rose tattoo on her left arm. Ring any bells? No, I'm sorry, your description doesn't ring any bells for me. Hold on, let me show you her photo to see if it rings a bell for you. Go or walk the extra mile. So when you go or walk the extra mile for someone, it means that you're doing something extra. You're doing more than what is expected of you. For example, what separates a great CSR from a good CSR is his willingness to go the extra mile for his customers. You know what? I love that company. When my order got canceled, the manager went the extra mile and gave me a $10 voucher on top of my refund. You want your employees to stay? Well, start walking the extra mile and secure the welfare. Call a spade a spade. So when you call a spade a spade, it means that you're describing something with no sugarcoating, no lying. You're being blunt. It's been three months since I've been waiting for my refund. Why don't you call a spade a spade and admit that your company is bankrupt? She sounds like a strangled cow and singing. Let's call a spade a spade before she goes out singing in public and embarrasses herself. A thousand dollars per month? I don't know about you, but I'm calling a spade a spade. This is a scam. On the same page. So when you're on the same page with someone, it means that you agree with him or her or that you have the same knowledge and understanding about something with that someone. Before you cancel an order, make sure that you're on the same page with your customer regarding the cancellation charges, okay? I thought we're on the same page. You run the customer service, I run the marketing. Why are you meddling with my affairs? We're obviously not on the same page here, so I'm handing in my resignation letter. That ship has sailed. You say this when referring to an opportunity that has passed and you can no longer take advantage of or to a situation that you can no longer change. In short, it's too late. You should have grabbed that offer last month. Now, that ship has sailed and the manager has offered the position to another agent. First, you sent me a damaged item and then the wrong caller. And now you're asking me to give you another chance? That ship has sailed. Give me my money back. You better get serious with your finances before the ship has sailed. Call it a day. When you call it a day, it means that you stop doing something because you're tired or that it is not successful. And because of the unbearable stress at work, my decision to call it a day made sense at that time. Now, I'm running my own business. You're tired, I'm tired, let's do this tomorrow and call it a day. You've been working for the company for almost a decade now with nothing to show for it. When are you going to call it a day? Keep someone in the loop. When you keep someone in the loop, it means that you are keeping him or her updated and informed about something. I don't use facts. Do you mind keeping me in the loop through email instead? 
team leads. Please keep your agents in the loop at all times. We cannot afford to lose customers due to outdated information. Come on, you didn't keep me in the loop with the office gossip and you expect me to know what's going on? Get the hang of something. When you get the hang of something, it means that you are becoming better or more skilled at a task that you're not initially good at. I know it's confusing, but don't worry, you'll get the hang of it soon. This is a difficult task. Don't expect that you'll get the hang of it on day one. I worked as an agent for five years, but I never did get the hang of dealing with abusive customers. Daylight robbery. It means that you're being charged a huge amount of money for something that you think is unreasonable or unfair. It basically means blatant overcharging. $1,000 for a monthly membership? That's daylight robbery. This is daylight robbery, plain and simple. No wise customer would ever pay that much money. Cost an arm and a leg. When you say that something costs an arm and a leg, it means that it's super expensive. With cost an arm and a leg, you don't necessarily think that it's an unfair pricing or a blatant overcharging. It just means that it's just super, super expensive. Listen, I'd love to subscribe to your monthly membership, but it costs an arm and a leg, so I guess I'll pass for now. This dress cost me an arm and a leg, but I don't regret it. This is just so gorgeous. Is it possible to vacation in Europe without it costing an arm and a leg? Read between the lines. When you read between the lines, you're trying to understand what is truly happening in a situation or what someone truly means, feels, and intends, even if he or she is not being straightforward about it. You're trying to decipher what is the actual meaning of what she's saying. Some customers aren't direct. They could say one thing but mean another. Therefore, a CSR must learn how to read between the lines. She didn't exactly admit that she stole the money, but reading between the lines? I just know she did. I refuse to play mind games. I'm tired of reading between the lines. Will you please tell me what's going on? Stand or hold your ground. When you stand or hold your ground, it means that you refuse to compromise, you refuse to change your belief, decision, or opinion despite being pressured. It basically means standing against an attack or insult. Guys, as soon as a customer becomes verbally abusive, hold your ground and make it clear that you won't tolerate it. Instead of running away, she stood her ground and then the lion retreated. She's just a kid. Why can't you hold your ground and say no? Start off on the wrong or right foot. When you start off on the wrong foot, it means you're beginning a relationship or interaction with someone incorrectly or badly. The opposite of this would be start off on the right foot. And another variation is get off on the right foot or get off on the wrong foot. Look, I think we started off on the wrong foot. How about we forget about that incident and start over? The conversation started off on the wrong foot when the agent ignored the customer's joke. The job interview started off on the right foot when the applicant made the manager laugh. I want to get off on the right foot with my boss. Would you give me some advice? Apples and oranges, apples to oranges, apples with oranges. These all mean unfair comparison. You use this idiom when you're talking about Items that just cannot be compared because they are completely different. They possess non-identical attributes and they just belong to different classes. For example, dude, stop comparing Samsung A51 to iPhone 12. They're not in the same price range. They're apples and oranges. To compare Taylor with Adele is to compare apples with oranges. It doesn't make sense. Apples and apples, apples to apples, apples with apples. So this is the exact opposite of the previous idiom. This means fair comparison. You use this idiom when you're referring to things that can fairly be compared because they are very similar. For example, since your mood tends to sour in the afternoon, why don't you interview all applicants in the morning? This way, you're comparing apples with apples. Just because you're comparing the prices doesn't mean you're comparing apples to apples. You should also consider the features and the quality. Go cold turkey. When you go cold turkey, you completely stop or quit using a substance that you regularly use or 
It could also apply to bad habits. For example, I tried going cold turkey from antacids, but every time I do, I suffer 10 times worse. Nicotine patches and gums did very little to cure my smoking addiction. You know what I did? I went cold turkey. If you want to get over your ex as fast as possible, just go cold turkey. No text, no calls, no Facebook stalking, nothing. Hands are tied. When your hands are tied, it means that you cannot help or intervene or take action because it is not under your control or it is not your decision decision to make. I want to help her, but my hands are tied. It's company policy. If it wasn't for the peak season, I would approve your leave. But right now, I'm sorry, my hands are tied. Even my manager's hands are tied. This order came from BBB, so we have no choice but to follow this down to a T. By the way, down to a T is also an idiom, which means perfectly, exactly. Not the sharpest tool in the shed. If you say that someone is not the sharpest tool in the shed, it means that he or she is a little slow, not very clever, or even stupid. The variations of this idiom are not the sharpest knife in the drawer, not the sharpest tool in the box, not the brightest bulb in the box. Don't transfer me to Amber, please. I have to admit, she's not the sharpest tool in the shed. She can't even spell my name. I'm not entirely sure if I trust his judgment. He's not exactly the sharpest knife in the drawer. I know I'm not the brightest bulb in the box, but I'm loyal and honest. That should count for something, right? Get cold feet. When you get cold feet, it means that you decide not to do something that you originally planned to do because you're losing confidence, you're frightened, and you're losing courage. I was once engaged, but I got cold feet and decided to call off the wedding. She was about to skydive, but when she saw the great height, she got cold feet and begged to stay on the plane. I thought I want kids, but after hearing my newborn nephew scream his lungs out today, I'm getting cold feet. Alright guys, thanks for watching. If you want me to make a part 2 of this, just let me know in the comments below. Bye!